The hero is generally considered a greatly beloved character in movies. In fact, many of the most impactful movies of all time are based on the hero's journey archetype, popularized by Joseph Campbell. Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, and any superhero movie for that matter, which all have the hero's journey embedded within the storyline. Now, don't get me wrong, the hero's journey is a crucial process of psychological development, but it is very misunderstood in today's culture. The hero, just like any archetype, has light and shadow counterparts. And if left unchecked, it can produce devastating results. There is a reason why the hero's journey is so popular in pop culture. The hero represents the deep yearning of the human soul to seek growth, adventure, and purpose, and ultimately represents the process of boyhood into manhood. To leave the ordinary world and explore the special world, as Joseph Campbell put it. Unfortunately, most people, including grown adults, don't even accept the call to adventure, thus never even beginning their hero's journey. So we try to fill this void by connecting with heroic characters like Goku, Luke Skywalker, and Spider-Man. We are going through a deep crisis of the masculine ritual process, where men are no longer going through true initiation into adulthood, self-responsibility, and duties towards ourselves and others. Instead, we have pseudo-initiations of adulthood. Society tells us that turning 18, getting a degree, working a job and paying taxes magically turns us into adults. But the truth is, psychologically speaking, we are still being dominated by the polar shadows of our archetypes. Real men are not violent or hostile. This is a result of being stuck in the shadows of immature boy psychology like the high chair tyrant who is deeply insecure about himself, so he wishes to dominate others. Most men are actually boys pretending to be men. And we are all guilty of this to some degree, including myself. And it's not necessarily our fault as we were never shown what a mature man is actually like. Most of us do not have wise elders to guide us through our initiation from childhood into adulthood. But there is hope, my friends especially in this age of information and opportunity. Now, deep down, we are aware of these primordial urges to live out the positive aspects of these archetypes, something that the ancients have been sharing through mythology for a very long time. In the book, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, it states that there are four main archetypes within immature boy psychology, which evolves into the four archetypes within mature man psychology. I understand that there are female equivalent archetypes such as huntress, maiden, goddess, queen, etc. And that within the masculine, there are feminine counterparts, which Carl Jung called the animus. But in this video, we will only focus on the hero archetype and its bipolar shadows that self-sabotage us from psychological growth. Archetypes as described by Carl Jung are primordial images or blueprints which are deeply wired within the human psyche. In other words, archetypes are basically the driving force of all human behavior. The hero archetype is an advanced stage of boy psychology and when further developed and matured, it eventually moves on to the warrior archetype, which we will touch on later. Immature psychology isn't meant to be a pejorative term. It simply means an early stage of human development, just like a shrub is an immature stage of a tree. It's not bad. In fact, it's necessary, but it still has a long way to go. Now, the truth is the boy in each of us, when he has reached his full potential, is actually the source of creativity, playfulness, joy, and curiosity. It's that part of you that's ready for an epic adventure and wants to learn and explore the world. But at the same time, when we get stuck in the shadow form of immature boyishness, or Peter Pan syndrome, who doesn't want to grow up, this can cause many obvious problems that stunt our growth. This is when mature manhood is required. Each archetype has a triangular three-part structure. At the top of the triangle, you have the archetype in its fullness. This is the ideal goal of each archetype, which serves us in different ways. At the bottom of the triangle, you have the dysfunctional bipolar shadow counterparts, one being the active form and the other being passive. I'll break down each main archetype in future videos, so make sure to subscribe, watch this space, but for now we will only focus on the hero archetype and its shadow counterparts. And even though the hero archetype is the most advanced form of boy psychology, 
When it's carried into adulthood, it actually blocks us from truly maturing. A classic example of this is in superhero mythology. Further along the hero's journey, such as Spider-Man, Tony Stark and Thor, they eventually painfully realize that their arrogant boyish ways cause them to be blind by their own pride and they end up seriously hurting innocent people including their loved ones please 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 let's just have like it you don't understand please this is all i have i'm nothing without this suit if you're nothing without this suit then you shouldn't have it in civil war this was made obvious by all the innocent lives that were taken as collateral why the heroes were recklessly fighting the bad guys their intentions were in the right place but as you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Being stuck in this hero role and fighting evil at all costs has a heavy price tag, which includes losing loved ones, being blinded by pride, and ironically creating even more evil, like Tony Stark did in Age of Ultron. He was so arrogant in his ways and committing to fighting evil that he played God and created an artificial intelligence to save humanity, only to create a malicious monster that caused unfathomable amount of pain and suffering, including those closest to him. He didn't realize his own limitations. Let's go over the two bipolar shadow archetypes of the hero, which will give you a deeper insight into what I mean. These include the grandstander bully and the coward. The grandstander bully is the classic puffed out chest dude who wants to impress others by showing his superiority and manliness. And if he is challenged, his ego will go into a rage fit due to his insecurities of being a man. You want to trigger a bully? Challenge his masculinity. It's like in Back to the Future when Marty McFly was especially triggered by being called a chicken. He just couldn't back out of a challenge, which of course led him into a lot of trouble. It was only at the end of the third movie when he finally learned to integrate this particular side of his shadow. Marty, don't. Grab him all this up. Stupid enough to race that asshole. And luckily he learned his lesson because we realize in the movie that if he was to submit to this impulse of proving himself in that moment, he would have died in a car crash. The grandstander bully can emerge in times of battle when our ego wants to flaunt our heroicness by unnecessarily risking our lives. Now, in very specific situations, of course, sacrificing your life may actually be the noble and necessary thing to do. But in reality, most times, it isn't. You have to think of your friends and family and, and the suffering this will inflict. But the grandstander bully will convince you that you are doing the noble thing. But in reality, you are giving in to boyish selfishness. I'm sure you've heard the term, don't be a hero. There is some level of truth to this, which I think means don't risk your life just for the sake of being brave. You might actually do more harm than good if this part of you is not kept in check. The grandstander bully believes that he's more important and is more skilled than what he really is due to his inflated ego and false sense of self. It's like trying to attack an armed robber because you play Call of Duty or you saw it in the movie. The only time that you should ever consider trying to take down an armed robber is if you were actually trained in armed combat. You can keep a level head and you know what you were actually doing. Don't risk others' well-being because you want to be a hero. The grandstander bully struggles to be vulnerable and realizing his own limitations. He's consumed by his own arrogance and never wants to admit when he's wrong or that he's not strong as he thought he was. And because of this, more often than not, he ends up shooting himself in the foot and in extreme situations, sinks the boat which takes everybody else with him. It's like the sergeant who unnecessarily sacrifices his platoon the psychiatrist who unnecessarily drugs a patient, the untrained shaman who performs surgery on vulnerable people, or the world leader who destroys the earth due to their own pride. If you're lucky, you will learn your arrogant ways before something really bad happens, and you don't have to wait until reality comes in and gives you a nice serve of humble pie in the form of an existential crisis, or someone close to you dies, or you get seriously hurt and end up in hospital. Now, some never learn, but many do, eventually. Every human just has a different threshold of what truly humbles us, of how much pain we can actually take until our fragile egos gets crumbled and we learn our lesson. Oh man, my arrogance was through the roof and I had to 
really get hyper slapped by reality excruciatingly hard to the point where my life fell apart and I was plunged into the dark abyss until I was genuinely humbled. Some of us are just more stubborn than others, I guess. Like it states in King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, the hero's downfall is that he doesn't know and is unable to acknowledge his own limitations. A boy or a man under the power of the shadow hero cannot really realize that he is a mortal being. Denial of death, the ultimate limitation on human life, is his specialty. When we do not face our true limitations, we are inflated. And sooner or later, our inflation will be called to account. In other words, the debt collector will eventually come, no matter how hard you try to run away. The coward represents the passive side of the hero archetype. It is the part of us that is reluctant and overly afraid when it comes to confrontations and facing our fears. This can also cause laziness and an overall lack of motivation. The coward will usually run away from conflict and excuse himself for being mature for walking away, but deep down he feels crappy because he knows it's a poor excuse. The coward will allow others to emotionally and physically dominate him. He may be super agreeable and pretend to go along with someone's belief, even though he's opposed it. This is the guy that is easily taken advantage of, sort of like Ned Flanders letting Homer Simpson walk all over him and take all his stuff without ever returning it. Needing those things in Cypress Creek? Yes. Oh. Uh... Oakley, doakley. Oakley, doakley. However, the coward, just like any human being, can only take so much crap until the grandstander bully emerges and hulks out into physical or verbal abuse. This happened to me many times growing up. In certain situations, I was so overly anxious and, and quiet that I suppressed all the insults that came my way. And I let people take advantage of me because I hated conflict until I couldn't take it anymore. In milder situations, I was verbally abusive and said horrible things to family and friends during a fit of rage. And in the more extreme situations, I emotionally exploded and went as far as to get into physical fights. Now, to be fair, when it came to dealing with bullies, they never messed with me after that. But other times I actually hurt people who I deeply loved and this caused some serious psychological problems. At the end of the day, verbal and physical abuse is never worth it. The wiser thing to do would have been to ground myself and build boundaries from the start instead of allowing toxic people to disrespect me until I raged out. You may even be a friendly sweetheart who wouldn't hurt a fly, but everyone has their limits. And sometimes you may do something you truly regret, like permanently injuring someone or in extreme situations even take a life. This is why self-awareness and integration is so important. The death of a hero in the life of a boy or a man really means that he has finally encountered his limitations. He has met the enemy and the enemy is himself. He has met his own dark side, his very unheroic side. Like I said earlier in this video, the hero archetype is crucial for our development and holds many positive traits such as courage, pushing through boundaries so that we may test ourselves and really see what we're made of and fulfilling our life's purpose. But eventually, you have to move on to the next level. With the death of the hero archetype comes the emergence of true humility. And this humility only comes when we learn our limitations. Not conceptually, but directly. If you're slaying dragons left, right and center, and all you care about is fighting evil and doing quote unquote good, paradoxically, this will unconsciously create more obstacles in your life so that you can fight and conquer and prove your strength. But life isn't just about you and your individual purpose. It's much greater than that. The hero realizes that his worst enemy is himself. You realize that you were the source of most of your problems. At this point, we realize that we cannot do this by ourselves. In fact, we are nothing without our loved ones. No matter how great we thought we were. And this is a huge blow to the ego, man especially when you realize that the world would keep going without you. And you're actually not that special. Every time we overreach our abilities, we create chaos and destruction. And we become so blind by our foolishness that we even lead others into the dark pit without realizing it. This is when true humility comes in, when we accept that we need help from others and something beyond ourselves. We're not gods. 
we are but mere mortals with serious limitations. It is at this stage where we become super vulnerable. Our boy ego dies. And this, my friends, is when we become truly ready to begin our initiation into manhood. And this is only the beginning of embodying the warrior archetype, the mature evolution of the hero. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We will continue this epic journey into the mature phase of the hero archetype known as the warrior, as well as its bipolar shadow. And we will also delve deep into other archetypes and practical integration techniques. So make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for future videos. Click on this video if you wish to learn more about the stages of the hero's journey, or this video if you wish to learn about the villain's journey or anti-hero's journey. And feel free to check the description box for links for relevant books that you might want to delve into. Anyways, much love and wishing you all the best on your hero's journey.